the wake up call is um, unfortunately not heated each time we've had an outbreak. And then of course in pandemics, which occur essentially every hundred years, um, we relearn the lessons that have been learned over and over. And while COVID-19 is horrible and it's something that I wish we hadn't have had happen and spread as much as it has, this is not the virus that keeps my, my fellow colleagues who are virologists and epidemiologists and infectious disease experts. This is not the virus we're concerned about. The virus we're concerned about is really disease X as is defined by the World Health Organization. Disease X would likely infect humans um, or plants or animals and devastate our livelihoods and what we do. So imagine, if you will, COVID-19, where the risk of infection, the comorbidities associated with that, with that would lead to a lot of people um, having a death. A 3% rate within all groups would be devastating to us. We can expect this disease X to occur in the next 50 to 100 years. So it's not something that's gone away. And just because COVID has emerged, there's many more coronaviruses that can emerge and cause disease in humans. And again, the good news, um, I always like to end with good news, is that we have the tools and the science to detect these um, as they come out into the, uh, in the environment that we might be exposed to them. And we have the tools to prevent this from occurring. The most common question I'm asked on a regular basis, um, there's really two, and they focus on COVID complacency and COVID information overload. It's hard to change human behavior and to reduce even our own risk. Um, I feel like the world has become my laboratory. I spend a lot of time either in scrubs or in PPE, personal protective equipment, um, at BSL-2, BSL-3, and BSL-4 in an encapsulating suit of all things to protect myself against the virus. And of course, using a lot of safety practices to de-risk my chance of being infected. And now I feel like when I go out in the community, um, if I'm going to the grocery store, if I'm going to pick up something at the hardware store, I feel like I'm in the laboratory still. The only safe place I feel is my car and of course my um, home. And in those situations, I'm still washing my hand or using sanitizer on my hands and I'm still wearing my mask in, in public. And it's just, it's a very difficult time to kind of like use these risk management issues. And this is my job. So I understand why the public is kind of done with this issue and want to move on. And we want to go back to our old lives. Um, but we have to remain vigilant and resilient to beat this virus, and that's an important thing we need to do. COVID information overload is the other issue. And well, we get a lot of information. It's usually not vetted, and sometimes there's just too much information. New data will change our approach, and we rely on good sources of data and peer review to do that. So multiple people looking at the data and also looking to see if it's been replicated. We must listen to reliable sources of information. The most reliable information right now we have is from the Centers of Disease Control, CDC, and the World Health Organization, WHO. There are a few other good, great websites, the Johns Hopkins website. Um, even check out our website. We try to post things and links to important data and make sure we have vetted that data before we move forward. In ancient Greece, Spartans would punish a warrior if he lost his helmet or his breastplate in combat. However, a more deadly event would occur if he dropped his shield. When we wear a mask and we social distance and wash our hands, we're creating a shield against the virus. These protections are not just for the individual, but for the unit, the family unit, the workforce unit, and the community. So as we move towards the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021 in this COVID-19 pandemic, be a COVID-19 Spartan. Do your job to protect yourself and others.